In this Easy Ed video lecture, we are going to learn the various data types in C which are broadly divided into primitive, user-defined and derived types. We will also study the variables and its declaration and initialization. Starting with introduction of data types first. A data type basically determines the type of value a variable can hold and the operations that can be performed on it. When we use a variable in a program, then we have to mention the type of data which it will store, which is handled using data type in C. Hey, it's time to concentrate now. Before learning the types of data types, let us learn what is a variable, variable declaration and initialization first. As we know, a variable is an identifier of the memory location where data is stored and can be retrieved. Imagine a library with books of different categories in different shelves. If the librarian has to locate a C programming book in it, would be difficult to locate it. Similarly, if we had to store some data in the computer memory and need to retrieve it, it will be difficult to locate it without a proper location identifier which is provided by the variable. Let's learn to declare a variable. The data type basically indicates the type that the variable belongs to. It can be of integer, floating point, character and so on. The variable name can be any user defined name given as per the rules of identify naming inventions. Examples are int count, where count variable could store the count of numbers. Float temperature, temperature variable could store the room temperature. Char key, key variable could store a character. We can also declare multiple variables of same type in one line. Every variable should be first declared in the declaration section in any program and then be used. Let's study initialization of a variable. When a variable is declared, no value is allotted to it. The process of assignment of initial value is known as initialization. Initialization follows declaration. For example, int a, b. Variables can also be initialized when they are declared in the same program statement. Two variables having the same value can be initialized in the same line in this way. Data types can be broadly classified into primitive types or user-defined types or derived types. Seriously, pay attention. This is important. Let's try to understand primitive data types first. C provides a standard minimal set of basic data types. The fundamental data types are character, integer, floating point types and void. Character is further divided into unsigned and signed types. Similarly, integer is further divided into signed and unsigned types, where it can be simply int or short int or long int. Again, floating point types include float, double and long double, while void is a fundamental type and is not classified further. Let's learn each of them. Note, each data type here is explained with respect to a 16-bit machine. The keyword int is used to define an integer variable. Integers are whole numbers with a range of values supported by a particular machine. Generally, they occupy 16 bits, 2 bytes of a storage. Here, in this example, the variable count is declared as integer type by using the int keyword and it is initialized to 6. Let's study character types now. The keyword used to declare a character type variable is char. This defines a single character of char type data. They are usually stored in 8 bits. The qualifier signed or unsigned is explicitly applied to characters. For example, the variable letter is declared by type char and is assigned character x as the initial value. Moving on to floating point types. Keyword float is used to declare floating point variables. They are stored in 32 bits with 6 bits of precision on 16 bit machines. Here in this example, variable miles is declared of float types and is assigned the value of 6.6. .6. When the accuracy provided by floating point number is not sufficient, then the number can be defined as double precision floating point. Keyword used is double. 
It uses 64 bits of storage with a precision of 14 digits. Here in this example, variable atom is declared of type double and initialized with the value 5.5 million. When more accuracy is needed, long double is used. Moving on the last primitive type, which is the void type. They are valueless. Keyword used is void. A function is said to be void if it does not return any value to the calling function. Let's write a program explaining the use of primitive data types. We start the program by declaring the main function followed by the type and name of variables. Here we take int, float, char and double. We initialize the value of sum to an integer value 10. Money to floating point value 2.21 letter to a character A and exposed to an exponential value of 2.01E6. Then we print those values. Just have a look at the output. Seriously, pay attention. This is important. Next what we need to learn is type modifiers. The type modifiers alter the meaning of the basic data type to yield a new type. The modifiers define the amount of storage allocated to the variable as it is not cast in stone. C has four types of qualifiers, also known as type modifiers, which precede the basic data types. Short, long, signed, unsigned. Out of these short and long are size qualifiers and signed and unsigned are signed qualifiers. Size qualifiers basically modify the size of the data types. ANSI follows this rule. What this means is that a short int should be assigned less than or the same amount of storage as an int and the int should be less or the same bytes than a long int. Similarly for real values. What this means is the real world for a 16-bit machine is this. Here size denotes the storage amount and data range defines the range of values. Now sign qualifiers are used to define whether the number is positive or negative. A positive number is always declared as unsigned and the leftmost signed bit of the memory word is also freed and so entire word is available for storing the non-negative number. While a negative number is declared of sign type as it needs the sign bit for defining the sign and the rest part of memory word is available for storage. Moving ahead, now we learn user-defined types. C allows us to create our own data types as reference to built-in type known as user-defined types. They are fields which are defined by a user in program. The first keyword we shall explore is type def. With this keyword, we can define a new type and give it a user-friendly name. For example, this code tells the compiler that we want to define a type named units of type int. In order to use this new type, we have to use this code. Thus here batch 1 and batch 2 are defined of type units, which is in turn of type int. Another user defined type is enumerated data type. It is defined in this way. The identifier here is a user defined enumerated data type which can be used to declare variables that can be of one of the values listed within the braces which are called as enumeration constants. We can declare variables of this type in this way. The enumerated variables v1, v2 can take one of the values from the value list. For example, days are the user-defined type with the enumerated constants as Monday, Tuesday and so on. Day 1 and Day 2 are enumerated variables where Day 1 is given Monday as a value and Day 2 is assigned Tuesday. The compiler automatically assigns digits 0, 1 and so on to the enumeration constants automatically. We can change the assignment of digits by explicitly mentioning changing it. Other values will be automatically assigned. We can combine the declaration and definition. Let's write a program to convert temperature in Fahrenheit to degree Celsius using this formula. We start by declaring the main function. Then we use typedef to define float type variable named asreal. 
Real is again used to define other variables, namely Fahrenheit and Celsius. Then we ask the user to enter the temperature in Fahrenheit and store it in the variable named as Fahrenheit, after which we convert it into Celsius and finally print the value. Hey, it's time to concentrate now. Last data type is derived type. The variables used so far are used to store only a single value at a time. Such variables are called as scalar variables. Scalar variables stored value is of atomic type. The examples of atomic types are int, float, char. In contrast to atomic types, there are aggregate types whose values can be decomposed and are related to by some defined structure. Such data types are also called as derived data types. It consists of the arrays, functions and pointers. An array is defined as a data set consisting of an ordered set of data values of homogeneous type and of fixed size. A function is a self-contained block of program statements that perform a particular task. It is basically a section of a program performing a particular job. A pointer variable is a variable that holds the memory address of another variable. Thus it does not hold a value in particular, but instead it holds the address of a variable which holds a value. Pointers in C provide an alternative means of accessing the information stored in arrays. Now let's write a program which will teach us implementation of all that we've learned in this lecture. We start by declaring the header files and the main function. After which, we declare two floating point variables named as z, q and two double variables x, y and another unsigned variable k. Then we declare and simultaneously initialize m as an integer variable and n as a long int. We assign values to variables z, x, y, k, q and y. Then we print their respective values on the terminal by using printf statement repeatedly. Have a look at the output. Value of m is printed as garbage and it goes beyond the range of signed integers for a 16-bit machine. Value of n is printed same. Then z is declared of floating point type so actually it should print only up to six decimal places which is done in printf statement. After this but for this statement, it is printed up to 12 decimal places, though it has 13 decimal places as initialized value, as indicated in the printf statement. Similarly, x is printed as up to 12 decimal places by printing it as a double number, while if we print it as double without specifying the precision, then it is displayed as it is. k is printed as unsigned int, and q and y are printed as floating point numbers with a precision of 6 bits. Let's have a quick review of what we've learned in this lecture. A data type basically determines the type of value a variable can hold. Data types can be broadly classified into primitive types or user-defined types or derived types. The fundamental data types are character, integer, floating point types and void. The keyword int is used to define an integer variable. Then the keyword used to declare a character type variable is char while the keyword float is used to store floating point values. When the accuracy provided by floating point number is not sufficient, then the number can be defined as double precision floating point. When more accuracy is needed, long double is used. Keyword void is used to declare valueless variables. The type modifiers alter the meaning of the basic data type to yield a new type. C has four type of qualifiers also known as type modifiers which precede the basic data types. Short Long Signed Unsigned Out of these short and long are size qualifiers and signed and unsigned are signed qualifiers. Size qualifiers basically modify the size of the data types. Signed qualifiers are used to define whether the number is positive or negative. C also allows us to create our own data types as references to built-in type known as user-defined types. 
type def defines a new type and gives it a user friendly name. Another user defined type is enumerated data type. Last data type is derived type, which is used to declare aggregate variables. It includes arrays, functions, and pointers.